10 years, or three years, excuse me, of poor cocoa harvest in two countries that produce nearly 60% of the world's cocoa. So where do prices go from here? We want to bring in Philip Schriebel, Blue Line Futures Chief Market Strategist. Phil, it's great to see you here. So talk to us just about the massive run-up that we've seen in the price of cocoa. How much of that has to do with fundamentals? How much of it has to do with some of the technical levels that we're seeing? Yeah, and this is a story that isn't just developing year to date, being up 140%. This is something going back one year, we're up 250%. So the story really resulted in less demand from COVID-19. So the producers, they reduced the size of the crop that they planted. And then when the consumer began to come back into the playbook and people started to spend more money and everything, the Russia-Ukraine conflict had begun in Russia curbed their exports of fertilizer and pesticides to the Ivory Coast. And really what that did was it put the plants at risk. So you follow the adverse weather, the poor crops, the disease trees, the increasing demand with the recovery in the economy, prices tended to spiral out of control and created this short squeeze. So the producers, they couldn't keep up with the demand because of the crop being so poor. So they canceled all the forward contracts that the end needs are the end user really needs. Um, so the costs just spiraled out of control. They couldn't get a hold of the supply. Well, I'm curious then about what the catalyst would be for prices to get a little bit better for the end consumer here. Uh, what would that look like and what might the timeline to that look like? Yeah, that's going to be a problem. So, and I mean, you start looking at how it's impacting different companies. So you go back to like May 2023, price of cocoa was $2,900 a ton. Now we're trading closer to $10,000 a ton. It's cost more for a ton of cocoa than it does for um, copper, for instance. And you look at something like Hershey's stock a year ago was at $294. Now it's only at $192. So that's really been impacted. The problem is this deficit is one of the largest since 1960. So what really needs to happen is, you know, the exchanges need to stem and curb some of the speculation that's going on in the markets. We're seeing the average price fluctuate about $400 a ton uh, on a given day. So that's $4,000 for every contract move for a regular speculator. So what some of the FCMs are doing and what some of the exchanges are doing is they're raising those margin requirements there. And right now it costs about $15,000 to control one contract. So some of the speculation has got to come out of it. You need to see a better crop over uh, in West Africa, and then you need to see some of that demand really come down. So it's a combination of things that probably won't get resolved anytime soon. Phil, talk to us about the impact that this is going to have on consumer, what the impact it's going to have on companies that rely heavily on cocoa. When you're talking about prices right around 10000 per ton, what does that trickle-down effect look like? We were thinking about that earlier on, you know, if you're someone who produces things like chocolate bars and things, we were, we were looking at what are the components that are going into it. You're going to have milk prices. You're going to have sugar prices. You're also going to have your labor, your debt costs and everything else going into it. So hopefully that some producer is maybe getting the benefit of lower milk prices. Also, labor prices have come down. But the problem is, is at some point in time, it's going to be you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. And when do cocoa prices continue to go up and really squeeze profitability. So that's why I think we're seeing stocks like Hershey really under pressure when you look over the last couple of years. Well, they're under pressure, Phil, but it's not just because of cocoa prices. There's another elephant in the room when we think about any company that's involved with snacking, and that's Ozempic. So I'm curious from your perspective, what's worse for a company like Hershey's, Mondelez? Is it cocoa prices or is it Ozempic? I could tell you, I know a lot of people that are on Ozempic, they're hearing some great results out of it. And one thing that it does is it really does curb, you know, your appetite and any of those excess things. You tend to eat more like, you know, like like a squirrel. You're eating nuts and berries and basic things. So, <laughs> you know, that's really going to take that demand down and it won't even impact not only like cocoa, but like the alcohol industry, any kind of snacks and things like that. You're really going to see that demand come down quite a bit. So this is a this is a play that's going to take out a, take a while to go through. So if you look at 8,500, the level on on cocoa, and it's trading right around 9,700 right now. If we broke to that level, technically we would see some kind of breakdown on the charts. We would maybe go back to a neutral trend, but you really got to get the excess speculation out of it. Philip, really helpful. Thank you so much for joining us on that and appreciate the squirrel reference as well. Philip Strebel, Blue Line Futures Chief Market Strategist. Thanks for joining us this morning. We're going to have all of your markets.